I'm gonna let you in on something huge. You're about to be a part of acoustic guitar history because we are launching the Acoustic Tuesday for Vets campaign. This is the largest fundraising campaign for the Guitars for Vets organization to date, and I want you to be a part of it. So here are the details. First, what's Guitars for Vets if you've never heard of it before? Guitars for Vets is a nonprofit company based in Wisconsin, and their whole goal is to spread the healing power of music to those who need it most. We have veterans coming back from deployment, veterans that have issues adjusting to civilian life, maybe some PTSD stuff, and they are finding music and using that as a healing outlet for them. And the Guitars for Vets program helps facilitate that through VA hospitals. It's a wonderful organization, one that I am so happy to be an ambassador for. Which brings me to the fundraising effort. On November 11th, 2019, we are holding a live Acoustic Tuesday for Vets show. This is gonna be an extended show with all sorts of live performances, interviews, and other special features that we cannot wait to bring you. So mark your calendars, November 11th, 2019. Rumor has it, even Patrick, the founder of Guitars for Vets, is flying to Bozeman so that I can interview him and find out even more about the roots of this program and the effect that it has. So do you have to wait until November 11th to get involved? Well, the answer is no. You can actually help out today. By getting an Acoustic Tuesday for Vets t-shirt, you're actually helping the fundraising efforts because all of the proceeds for the sale of any Acoustic Tuesday for Vets merchandise is gonna go 100% to Guitars for Vets. There's a link right in the description below that you can visit our Teespring store. You're gonna see a whole bunch of merchandise, so many options your head will likely explode. I want you to find the Acoustic Tuesday for Vets merchandise. You'll see it marked Acoustic Tuesday for Vets 2019. There's all sorts of different options. We've got hoodies, we've got t-shirts, we've got women's shirts, uh, baby dolls or, or uh, slouchy shirts, wh whatever they call them today. We've got those there as well. There's pillows, there's blankets, there's stickers, there's everything you can imagine. And as long as it says Acoustic Tuesday for Vets 2019, you can guarantee that your purchasing of one of those items, all of the proceeds from it will go to Guitars for Vets as a donation from any guitar geek that chooses to purchase any of those merchandise items. Now you're thinking, okay, this sounds cool, but what's the goal? What should we be going after here? The goal of the Acoustic Tuesday for Vets campaign is to raise $100,000 for the Guitars for Vets organization. And you might be thinking, okay, well, we've got Acoustic Tuesday viewer donations directly to Guitars for Vets. We've got the proceeds from the t-shirt sales. That will get us close. And I know we can do it because we're a pretty large thriving community, but we're also gonna incorporate industry leaders. I'm talking guitar stores, I'm talking guitar manufacturers, luthiers, products that we know and love. We're trying to include everybody to have as big of an impact as we possibly can. And I've got great news for you. Well, I've got two pieces of great news. I'm gonna give you a site to go to that will give you all the nitty gritty details, everything you need to know. In fact, there's a special bonus about the shirt that I failed to mention, but I'll get there in a second. First, We've already gotten two pledges from companies that we've worked with in the past. Yes, the first one comes from Matt at Eddie's Guitars. So very quickly, I'd like to turn things over to Matt and look at his pledge video. Hello folks, Matt with Eddie's Guitars coming to you as always from St. Louis, Missouri, and I'm thrilled to report we just made our pledge to Acoustic Tuesday for Vets. We would love to nominate our great friends at Bourgeois Guitars and my great friend Jason Costel at Costel Guitars. Tony, what you're doing here is incredible. Thank you for bringing this uh, community together to help the uh, Guitars for Vets organization. We love what you're doing and love to be a part of it. Thanks, Tony. So I wanna thank Matt so much for participating in this fundraising effort and also for nominating two other companies. He nominated Bourgeois Guitars and Jason Costel. So we hope for their involvement as well. And we also have another company, as I mentioned before, that already pledged a donation amount. And I'd like to introduce to you, if you haven't seen him before on the Acoustic Tuesday show, Brendan from Heartbreaker Guitars and his awesome pledge video. Hey, what's up, Tony? This is Brendan from Heartbreaker Guitars and we have just pledged our commitment to the Acoustic Tuesday Guitars for Vets program that you are doing. And we are not only gonna give you a cash donation, Tony, but we are also gonna donate a really cool guitar for the cause. So thanks for inviting us into the program and we are so excited to be a part of this. We'd also like to challenge our homies in the Santa Cruz, California area, Richard Hoover and Rick Turner of Rick Turner Guitars to participate in this amazing event. Guys, on you. 
Thank you so much, Brendan. We really are excited that you're a part of this. And also thank you for challenging Santa Cruz Guitar Company as well as Rick Turner. This is so cool because I see this fundraiser as kind of like an ice bucket challenge, less the ice bucket. Uh, basically what we want is for everybody to become involved in this massive fundraising effort to make an enormous difference. Now I wanna go back to the shirt for a second because remember any of those Acoustic Tuesday for Vets shirts that you purchase off of our Teespring site, all the proceeds go directly to Guitars for Vets as a donation. But you'll also be featured in an upcoming Acoustic Tuesday show because if you order that Acoustic Tuesday for Vets t-shirt or sweatshirt or whatever merchandise piece you choose to order and you take a picture with it and submit it at acousticlife.tv forward slash AT4Vets, the number four vets you'll actually be featured in an upcoming Acoustic Tuesday show amongst all of our Acoustic Tuesday angels. Yes, anybody that donates, we are considering an Acoustic Tuesday angel, whether it's a company, whether it's an individual sporting a shirt, we just appreciate that you are contributing to the cause and are a part of this massive fundraising effort. So just in closing, I do want you to know that this is going to make history. This is going to make magazines, this is going to make newspapers, but more importantly, you're changing lives by donating to this program. Literally, the, the joy and healing that you find yourself from music, you're spreading to somebody else. You're helping somebody else discover that. So this is a major deal. Something, again, that's near and dear to my heart as an acoustic guitar geek and probably near and dear to your heart as well as an acoustic guitar geek. So if guitar geeks can unite behind this cause, I know we can make an enormous impact. And I'm so excited for November 11th, 2019 for the Acoustic Tuesday for Vets live show. Again, make sure to mark your calendars. It's gonna be amazing. And and in these upcoming Acoustic Tuesday episodes, you're gonna see more and more pictures, more and more shirts, more and more companies making videos. It's gonna be pretty exciting and we're gonna be building some major momentum. So again, please check that out. If you wanna know all the nitty gritty details, go to acousticlife.tv forward slash AT4Vets. That's the number four, so it's AT, the number four, V-E-T-S. Again, acousticlife.tv forward slash AT4Vets. All right, last week on Acoustic Tuesday, we took a listen to Yasmin Williams. You found out about the Walking the Floor podcast with Chris Shiflett. We listened to the Emerald X30 Jumbo Carbon Fiber Guitar and Matt gave us a masterclass in humidity. This week on Acoustic Tuesday, you've already found out about the Acoustic Tuesday for Vets fundraising efforts. Matt from, from Eddie's Guitars is actually gonna play us one of his original tunes on a brand new guitar that is mighty fine, if I do say so myself. You're gonna learn about a Guitar Hero documentary and a must-hear Texas Troubadour, one that you probably have never heard of before, but after you hear him, his life, your life will be changed by his music. All that and more right after this. I'm Tony Policastro, and this is the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Guitar geeks, unite. Welcome to Acoustic Tuesday, episode number 105. This is the show where you're gonna learn about acoustic guitar gear, discover acoustic artists, and get inspired to live your very best and very boldest acoustic life. As with all episodes of Acoustic Tuesday, I'm gonna share with you my guitar geek list for the week, but first we need to dive into some guitar geek trivia. So here is your question. John Prine was born on October 10th, 1946. In what Illinois town? Was it A, Maywood, B, Naperville, C, Peoria, or D, Decatur? Go ahead and ponder that, and at the end of the show, I'll be sure to give you the answer. Now, before we go any further on the show, I do want you to know that Acoustic Tuesday is brought to you by Tony's Acoustic Challenge. Are you tired of playing the same handful of things over and over? With Tony's Acoustic Challenge, you'll have more fun with your guitar while getting better in the process. This is done with an innovative method I call dynamic guitar learning. Log in every day to find a super fun 10 minute guitar challenge that rotates between the five essential categories of guitar improvement. Here's a recent five star review from Michael W. I joined TAC along with the Fretboard Wizard course. I recommend them both very highly. I'm halfway through the Fretboard Wizard and for the first time I can figure out songs by ear. I would never have believed that would happen. The TAC exercises are great fun and I look forward to them each day. Very glad I joined. To see why Tony's Acoustic Challenge has a 4.9 star rating from over 574 reviews, please visit guitarchallenge.com or click on the link in the description below. All right, I am super excited to dig into the Guitar Geek list today. And here along with me, offering me encouragement, uh, offering me refreshments, offering me just a listening ear and even a shoulder to cry on is Sir Noah Jacob Heckman Jr. the first. Noah, how are you doing today? Tony. How are you? <laughs> my my brain got ahead of me as I was speaking your name. Yeah. And I almost said Noja. Mm. And that would have been 
I would have derailed. So that's, I just decided to break it into syllables. That's actually the name of my uh, death metal band. Noja? Noja. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Noah, how are you doing this fine morning? I'm uh, doing really good, actually. Good. Had a had a pretty fun weekend. Good. Uh, got to come out and celebrate with you. That was after, a fun time. After you uh, completed the uh, Ridge Run here in Bozeman, Montana, which is pretty awesome. I it was you, a difficult endeavor. I think you ran like a billion miles like through the mountains. Yeah, it, was a, a, it ended up being an 18-mile run, roughly 18 miles. But w- the whole premise of this run is you run up one side of the mountain range and then run on the ridge all the way to the other side of the mountain range. Uh, about 6,000 feet of elevation gain, about 9,000 feet of elevation loss, and it was hard. I went through some dark times on top of that mountain. But I was glad to celebrate with you. It was a fun, yes. fun evening for sure. But you did it. It was a major win, and we got to hang out over the weekend. Double win. Double win. Well, no, I want to dig right in because I've got something that's pretty darn awesome. We've talked about Matt from Eddie's Guitars a lot. He, of course, is the host of the Ask Matt segment, where I pose a question to him, or you pose a question to him, and he he goes ahead and answers it, because the guy is an acoustic guitar wonder. He knows so much. His brain, it's like, if you could just, like, open up his brain, you'd see, like, the Britannica, Encyclopedia Britannica set, but all dedicated to the acoustic guitar. He just knows so much. But on top of knowing so much and being a a font of acoustic guitar knowledge, he plays incredibly well. Now, he would never admit to this. I've never seen somebody or heard somebody play as smoothly and beautifully as Matt does and be so self-deprecating. He will throw himself under the bus repeatedly, but I'm here to boost him up because you know what? He's incredible. I encourage people to play every day, and he was here right before the Acoustic Life Festival. He received his brand new Santa Cruz fingerstyle model, which is stunning. You'll see it in this video. So uh, we asked Matt to play a little bit, and wouldn't you know it, he just did it. I think he had enough bourbon to, to agree to playing a couple tunes. So here is one of his original tunes entitled Maine in August, played on his brand new Santa Cruz fingerstyle model. <laughs> Thank you. 
a beautiful tune for certain. I want to thank Matt for sharing some of his original songs with us. That is the first of just a few that we recorded, so you'll see some of those on upcoming episodes of Acoustic Tuesday. And then, of course, when Matt releases his album, we'll be the first to let you know. Hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, Matt. We're all waiting to hear a beautiful album because your songs are amazing, and we know you can do it, and you have this beautiful guitar, so please, please record it and share it with us. Okay, that's enough. I won't beat up on Matt too bad. I do want to keep rolling down the line. I want to hear from the community, and I've pulled some comments from episode 102. And let me tell you, uh, Noah, you've got some splaining to do. I do? You made a remark about coffee that I'm... really, really ruffled some feathers, I gotta tell you. I, I wish we could slow down that moment. Because <laughs> I knew when I said it, <laughs> I just had a feeling. Yeah. And I thought, I debated the whole rest of that episode whether or not I should jump back in and just acknowledge that obviously this is a general blanket statement <laughs> and it does not include everyone over 60. But you know what? I decided let's have some fun. And <laughs> And boy, did fun show up. Yeah, we, uh, uh, I got a couple of texts from my parents because uh, just to update you all, there was talk about making coffee in a vegetable soup manner. And I was kind of, I was kind of, you know, jabbing at my folks a little bit because I, I was recently out to visit them. And I got this text from my mom that was just, it was, it was scathing. I mean, in a, in a nice way. And, and only, in, only in the way that a mom can, can scathe. Um, <laughs> And uh, she was like, really? Noah's now an expert on, on coffee for people over 60? So I, got a, I pulled a couple of comments. So Noah, just um, stay strong through these comments, okay? Uh, okay? So here we go. This first one comes from Keith Bates. He's from Columbia, South Carolina. He says, wishing the best to all of us in the guitar geekdom. Great advice, Tony. Adrian Blue is amazing. Thank you for a wonderful and informative hour well spent. Now I have to go fix up another cup of my own death wish, my own blend coffee. Sir Noah... I want to taste my coffee. Dark roast. I am 66 years old. Hats off to you, Tony and Sir Noah. By the way, loving the new t-shirts, when will they be available? Well, Keith, I'm happy to say that I too scolded Noah about his coffee making, but also that the t-shirts are available. We have a bunch of merchandise available at the Acoustic Tuesday store. There's a link right beneath this episode. If you click on it, you'll see everything. And please remember that anything that says Acoustic Tuesday for Vets does uh, generate proceeds towards the Guitars for Vets fundraising effort. So keep that in mind as you check out the store. The next comment comes from Lou Berman. And this is kind of like a, uh, is it Dear Abby? Is that the, the, the newspaper column? Yeah. Okay, so I want to read this to you. So Noah, this There's is like two you. of them. They're, weren't they like twin sisters? I don't it was remember. Like, it was Dear Abby and Dear Ann or something like that. Okay. And they were sisters. Well, remember how people would sign off? Yes. Like super sad in San Antonio? Yes. This is kind of contains one of those. I know which one this uh, is. Lou Berman says this. No, Noah, that's not how anybody over 60 makes coffee. Am insulted in Pennsylvania. The next comment comes from uh, Jimmy Mead. We're going to go off the coffee train of thought here. Uh, Jimmy Mead actually has ties to Dan Fogelberg, who was a featured uh, um, was featured in a trivia question that I uh, that I asked in episode 102. Jimmy says this: Dan Fogelberg, I am from Peoria, Illinois, Dan's hometown. The reason I mentioned this is Dan's mother and father, Margaret and Larry Fogelberg, babysat my older sister and I. They were very musical people. Larry being a band director at a local school and Margaret being a pianist. Although I don't remember Dan, my mom tells me when he was in town, I would just listen to him play as long as he would allow me to. That would have been the early 70s. I think that's where I get my passion for music, guitar playing, and songwriting. Thanks, Fogelbergs, truly amazing people. What an awesome story, and I'm so pumped that, uh, Jimmy, you left that comment. That was uh, just a delight to read. In fact, my dad brought that comment to my attention. He's like, did you see that, that guy that was connected to Dan Fogelberg? And I was like, Oh, I haven't seen it yet, but I certainly will dig through. So I found that and I wanted to share it with everybody because I thought that was just an awesome guitar geeky story. Back on the coffee train, uh, the quote unquote dark roasting of Noah, as, as I will uh, uh, refer to it. Uh, Sharon T, also known as Mom Attack, says this, Noah, 60 plus year olds here and we drink coffee like it's coffee with real flavor. Can't see the bottom coffee. As for Tony's parents, well, for heaven's sake, they live in a place where they can be snowed in for weeks. They probably make their coffee weak so they can be sure it lasts until the spring thaw. 
It's pretty accurate. So we'll leave the coffee thing behind. Noah, we appreciate you uh, taking those comments to heart. Well, let me just <laughs> let me just officially apologize <laughs> to anyone who I've offended. <laughs> I retract my statement and say maybe that's how everybody over eighty makes their coffee. <laughs> well. See that round of comments pop up. Um, anyways, uh, our last comment comes from former Acoustic Tuesday, well, current Acoustic Tuesday artist, formerly featured Acoustic Tuesday artist, Adrian Blue, who is an Acoustic Tuesday viewer. He says this, Tony and Noah, you guys are the real MVPs. Thanks for the rad feature. Stoked to be working together and I look forward to meeting y'all someday. Well, Adrian, the sentiments are, uh, that's a two-way street there because we can't wait to meet you and we're excited that you make awesome music that we can indeed feature. Um, just super excited that you watch the show and we just appreciate the hell out of it. So thank you so much. Now, I want you to keep in mind, you can have a comment featured as well if you leave one. So I wanna urge you to please leave a comment and when you leave a comment, please make sure to include where you're tuning in from. Uh, it's so cool to see how many guitar geeks watch the show first, but also to see where you all call home. So it's so neat to see that. So please leave a comment. And while you're doing that, please subscribe to the Acoustic Life YouTube channel. It's super easy. Hit that red subscribe button. Don't forget to click that little gray bell. That'll give you a notification of each and every video that does get posted so you don't miss out on any of the guitar geeky goodness. And last but certainly not least, please, like this episode of Acoustic Tuesday here on YouTube, click that thumbs up button because by clicking that thumbs up button, you let us know that you do indeed like the show, but also you help other guitar geeks find the show because the more likes, the more exposure the show gets and the more guitar geeks get to gather every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. All right, moving on down the line. I'm getting lost here because I'm, I'm just cruising right now. Uh, I got a whole checklist here and I'm just, I'm amazed at how much stuff I've blasted through. I think it's because of the coffee. This is, uh, this is coffee from Fretboard Coffee in Missouri. Uh, this is the Acoustic Life Blend. You might wanna reach out to them and just ask, hey, you got any of that Acoustic Life Blend left over? Because if you do, I'd love to get it. It's great coffee. They, they watch Acoustic Tuesday also. Anyways, okay, uh, uh, let me move on to this next item because it's a documentary that hasn't been released yet, but I caught wind of, and I, as soon as I saw it, I was like, what is happening? Somebody got together and they made a documentary about literally my favorite guitar player in the universe. I mean, on the planet of Earth, okay? And somebody made a documentary about Tommy Emmanuel called Endless Road. Now it hasn't been released yet. I'm not sure when it will be released for our viewing pleasure, but I found a trailer to whet our guitar e geek appetite. And uh, here it is. It's the trailer for Tommy Emmanuel, the Endless Road documentary. <laughs> makes you want to burn your guitar. When I watch Tommy Emanuel, I realized that I had been coasting for many, many years. Imagine Chet Atkins with the testosterone of Eddie Van Halen. He just is part of his instrument. You can see him almost dancing with his guitar. There's top guitarists in the world, and then there's Tommy. When the guitar was invented, it was made for this person to play. All right, to learn more about that documentary, please visit acousticlife.tv forward slash AT105. Uh, there's a couple different articles that I pulled and linked to right there at that URL that you can click on to see all of the accolades that it received at the Perth Film Festival. In fact, I believe it pulled home uh, a couple of awards, if I'm not mistaken. If it didn't, it probably should have because the subject matter alone makes it award worthy in my mind. But uh, also go there to check out uh, potential release dates. And as soon as I find a release date, I'm assuming it'll be available digitally at some point in the future, I'll be sure to let you know because that's a Guitar Geek documentary that I think we all will appreciate. Um, Tommy is one of those individuals that you look at him as a musician and he is just incredible. He, he really, he, it's just, it, it's hard to even put into words the feelings that he conjures when he plays because it's just looking at pure joy playing. And as a human being, he's even more incredible. I, the, the, the distinct honor to interview him some years ago. And once I could actually get my words out, uh, we had a great conversation and I admire him as a musician, but I, I think I admire him more as a human being because he's just, he's just a, a all positive energy and good vibes and just uh, 
he he really lives he lives an acoustic life. I mean, he 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 lives an admirable acoustic life because he is so so positive and he just loves what he does and you can see it because he talks about it with such passion. And then when you see him actually play, it's like it's totally mind blowing. So I am needless to say, I'm excited for this documentary uh, because I think we'll get a glimpse into Tommy's life that that none of us really have before. And uh, he's somebody that I certainly want to know more about. So make sure to check that out again, acousticlife.tv forward slash AT105 if you want to do some further reading about that particular documentary. Now I do have- Hey Tony. What's that? I just want to say, yeah. he's also a Guitars for Vets ambassador as Correct. Well. Oh my gosh, that's the time. Oh. <laughs> Dude, I, I wrote that down on the computer and then I forgot to carry it over to my checklist mm. because I was trying, like, did you notice that, uh, well, I can't really, oh no, I can't say that because it doesn't give away the answer. John Prine was born in Illinois and then I noticed that comment from, I believe it was Jimmy, who said uh, that Dan Fogelberg's hometown was in Illinois mm. and Tommy Emanuel is a Guitars for Vets ambassador. I'm a Guitars for Vets ambassador. We support Guitars for Vets at Acoustic Life. It's all, it's one of these things where it's all coming together. Such a small world. It's a small world. It's the acoustic guitar community. Anyway, I didn't mean to derail. Please continue. It's okay, I was just gonna say, we've got our featured artist coming up and I've got a great story about a place called Pisser's Palace. You gotta stay tuned for that because you need to hear about it. Uh, I also have some mailbag arrivals that I'm really excited about. Uh, a digital mailbag arrival, you'll, you'll see what I mean. And of course your trivia answer, but I wanna dig into some guitar signals. We've been getting tons of submissions lately and I wanted to pull together uh, all of our overseas guitar signals. So I pulled together guitar signals from Ireland, from Norway, and from England. Uh, this first guitar signal comes from Danny M. He is from Ireland and he says, hey guys, I am too shy, horrendously unattractive to get in a picture, but here's my guitar signal. You'll notice my lovely new shirt draped across my Princeton amp. From left to right, my new Loudon S35W. It's a 12 fret, the first of its kind, and features English walnut top, back, and sides, and some handmade Robson tuners. The middle one is a Loudon S35 14 fret, Sitka spruce over Indian rosewood. The last is a 1971 Tele. Now this is where things get good and guitar geeky. My dad gigged it for 30 years, and when he retired, he gave it to my brother. I played drums at the time. My brother sold the guitar, and dad and I were devastated. Get this. Several years later, whilst watching the news, a segment came on about a new guitar shop opening in Dublin. And I immediately spotted dad's telly. We jumped in the car straight away and bought it back. It's the only guitar I'll never sell. Thanks for indulging me, loving the show, Danny. P.S. Scotch is the nectar of the gods. What an awesome story. As soon as I read that, I was just kind of like jaw on the floor. It's one of those cool moments where the gear comes full circle. We get so focused on gear and cool stuff. And this one is like, has that emotional pull, tugs on the heartstrings, I love it. So thank you, Danny, for sharing that with us. The next guitar signal comes from Bristol, England, from Kevin S. Hey, Tony, and a very good day to you and Noah from Bristol in England, and thanks for the ever wonderful Acoustic Tuesday. I hope that you will accept a late overseas entry for who does Noah look like? I think Noah looks like England cricketer Jimmy Anderson. Now, did you did you find a picture of yeah, Jimmy Anderson? Yeah, I, I, I did. W hold, hold on here. What? Um... Okay, here's me. Okay, <laughs> and here's uh, international cricket star uh, Jimmy. <laughs> there we go. I'm popping it over my face just so it's like me or it's no. like him. <laughs> You said that at a moment I had a full mouth of coffee. And when you said international cricket star, it just set me over the edge. There you go. So so the viewers can decide <laughs> if I look like international cricket star Jimmy Anderson. That's right. Okay. Not to be uh, confused with international pop star Jimmy Chow. Correct. Is it Jimmy Chow? It's Jay Chow. Jay Chow, sorry. Yeah. I, I assume it's just Jimmy. Anyways, on to Kevin's guitar snow. Uh The back row left to right. Now, each of these guitars has a name, and as a guitar geek, I have to read it because I love it. Uh, named Fast, it's a 1985 Tokai Breezy Sound Tele named Bulbous, a Squire Classic Vibe 1950s Strat, followed by an Epiphone Dot named Big Joan, Next, an Epiphone 1965 Les Paul Pro named Dr. Dark, probably my favorite because it conjures up images of, of comic books. Next, Blabber, a Fender US Standard Tele. 
And following that, Smoke, a Squire Vintage Modified Telecaster Custom. The middle row, left to right, contains Yes, Abba, and Zaba. Both are Faith guitars. The first is a Naked Mercury, and Zaba is a Naked Venus 12 string. The front is Ella Guru, a Patrick James Eggle Linville Custom. You can see that my didgeridoo, named Da, obviously, managed to sneak into the photo, despite being told that it was guitars only. She is such an intention seeker. A proper diva. I can feel my gas coming on again. I just know that there's a sweet Martin HD 35 with my name on it somewhere out there. Keep up the good work, guys, and stay safe. Kevin. Thanks, Kevin, for sharing your guitar arsenal with us. And following Kevin's guitar arsenal, we have to go to Oslo, Norway, for a guitar arsenal from, I'm going to try and say this as best I can, Vigard Lova. And he says, hi, Tony. Love your show, and I learned so much from watching your videos. It's a long way from Oslo, Norway to Bozeman, but as you say, guitar geekery has no borders. True, very true indeed. There is so much to share and talk about when it comes to guitars and good music, but I will limit myself to share it with you, my guitar arsenal. From the left is my Epiphone EBO short scale bass from 2008, which my most played bass as it was my only one for a long time. My new go-to bass is the Flea Signature Jazz Bass with pure vintage 64 jazz bass pickups and a road-worn finish from 2017. This sounds killer. On the wall in the corner is my Kala U bass, a solid body bass, a really fun instrument to play and it sounds great. On top of the Marshall Fridge is my first guitar that I started playing on at 14 years of age, an Emperador model, model G85 Spanish guitar with nylon strings. Then my BC Rich Warlock. This guitar looks cooler than it sounds. Side note, I love BC Rich pointy guitars. It's like a, it's like a um, guilty pleasure of mine, so I'm so glad you included that. Uh, next on the sofa is my daughter's Pink Squire Mini by Fender. This is actually a decent starter guitar that sounds and plays surprisingly good. On the floor is my Olympic White Fender Stratocaster American Standard. This is my main go-to electric guitar, to which I will add when we were looking at this picture, Noah said, isn't that the Wayne's World guitar? And I said, yeah, I'm pretty sure you're right, dude. Um, and then we have a small Everdreen guitar gitalele, uh, which is perfect for hiking, road trips, and party playing. And I love my Koikyo ukulele. On the wall to the right is my Fender Paramount PM2 Parlor Guitar, which is the newest member of the guitar arsenal. Mahogany sides, back, and neck with spruce top and rosewood fretboard. The two oldest members are my Hagstrom Model 15 made in my hometown Oslo in Norway sometime between 1960 and 1963. This was my grandfather's guitar and has had a hard life. Unfortunately, the neck has been broken and poorly repaired, and the action is as high as the Eiffel Tower. The sides and neck are made of birch with spruce bottom and top. Due to the import ban following the World War, they could use only local materials and build locally. Hagstrom is originally Swedish, but started making guitars in Norway in the 1940s. Cool guitar geek fact. And lastly, my favorite guitar is my Kalamazoo Gibson KG21. It is made in the Kalamazoo factory sometime between 1935 and 1939. It has a Gibson label inside, but the serial number is partially unreadable. Mahogany sides and back with a spruce arch top with F-holes. It plays really nice and sounds amazing after all these years. Check this out, another family tie-in with the guitar. This guitar originally belonged to my grandfather's brother. He was a major artist in Norway in the late 1940s and 50s. Some of his recordings with this guitar from the 50s are still available on Spotify. And his closing note, and my favorite part of this whole thing, hopefully I can record a song of my own with this guitar to accompany, to accompany the old tunes that are out there already. Very cool. So I want to thank you guys for submitting your guitar snulls. And if you're thinking, gosh, I want to share my guitar snull with the folks at Acoustic Tuesday and all the guitar geeks that watch, please do so. It's super easy. First, order yourself a guitar snull shirt, which you'll find a link right beneath this episode. Pick your favorite color. Once you get that shirt, put it on and take a picture amongst all of your guitars. And then lastly, submit that photo at AcousticLife.tv. Once you go to that website, you'll see a submit link in the top menu. Click on that. You can upload your picture, describe it, tell us a fun story, and we will share it on an upcoming episode of Acoustic Tuesday. You'll notice that I'm doing the guitar snells in batches lately because I'm trying to find a theme. This was the uh, overseas theme. So I'm super delighted to uh, share that with you all. And uh, it's so cool seeing all the submissions. Uh, you all have some amazing guitar snells. Even the small ones are cool in and of their own right. And the large ones are downright cool because there's just so many guitars. So guitar snells are welcome. Size doesn't matter. I don't care what they say. I'll let you just handle that one. Um, <laughs> next up, let's visit the mailbag. Um, surprisingly enough, the mailbag contains an album I forgot that I ordered. I know it happens, but uh, a couple mailbags ago, I said that uh, I ordered some, some albums from Courtney Hartman's site, uh, particularly the Ready Reckoner album that she just released, which is awesome, by the way. And 
I forgot I added this one to the mix. The Dear John album that she recorded with Robert Ellis. All John Hartford songs and um, a stunning album. In fact, when I got this album, I was so excited because I forgot I put it in the cart and on the box, Sorry, I had to come back. Uh, it says, sorry for the delay on this one. And I just appreciate the personal touch. So thank you, Courtney, for sending the album. And thank you for uh, making beautiful music. Uh, may you live your best acoustic life. And now I have the first ever. How do, how, what's the proper title for this next mailbag item? Is it a digital arrival? Or is it a... Um, it's like a distant mailbag arrival. It's like a taste of things to come. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I like that. I like that. So I had an arrival... Uh, in the mailbag that actually didn't come here, but it came to Las Vegas. Let me explain. Heartbreaker guitars are in, uh, they're in Las Vegas, and I'm going there here in a couple weeks. And uh, some Acoustic Tuesday viewers stopped by and dropped off a mailbag item for me there. Yes, it's a bottle of bourbon with a personalized note from Jumpin' Jeff, which I appreciate. I'm super excited to dig into that. Hopefully the folks at Heartbreaker Guitars will um, indulge with me and, and shenanigans will follow, all related to guitar geekery, of course. I've threatened Brandon numerous times and let him know that, hey, I'm coming to Las Vegas. I'm probably gonna buy a guitar. And I have a feeling that our Vegas vacation will be more like a Heartbreaker Guitars vacation with just a small detour to Vegas. Unless, if I win big at roulette, which is my favorite because I don't have to think about anything, I just pick a color and some numbers. Um, if I win big at that, uh, I could be coming home with two guitars. Which well, would be amazing. Well, based on your one of your previous conversations with Matt about vintage versus new and custom yeah i don't know i don't know you know i think it's just whatever strikes me that given day I as long as you come back with the loading i think we're good so that's that's high on my list i want to try out numerous loadings uh, to see if they'll fit my fancy but i also been looking at his bourgeois inventory mm. and it's just like talk about what stuff that dreams are made of i was well, like three three's a charm or something so you're saying come back with three guitars? No, no, no. Like, oh. you need three bourgeois? bourgeois? Yeah. yeah. Or is it, it's bourgeois. It doesn't have a plural, does it? Bourgeois, yeah. Bourgeoises? Yeah. <laughs> Bourgeois? <laughs> it's like moose. It, it could be like, you could say meese. Correct. That's not right. Look at but all these. Bourgeois? Look at all these bourgeois. Look at all these bourgeois. It's a flock of bourgeois <laughs> migrating to Tony's house. Anyways. Yeah, you're going to have fun. <laughs> you're going to have fun winning and spending money. Yeah, okay. It's good. <laughs> it's if, if, you know, if the right guitar's there. I mean, the pressure's really on, Br on Brendan because he's got to stock the right guitar for me. And mm -hmm. I've given him no criteria. It's true. So he's probably got a, a stock room full. Anyways. Oh, back on track. Uh, who are we listening to this week? Okay, so I mentioned earlier that the artist that I'm about to share with you has a connection to a place, a bar called Pisser's Palace. So let's dig into this story. So a couple months back, Christy, Christy Hayes, who I featured way back on Acoustic Tuesday, a dear friend of mine, somebody who I get to play music with, somebody who is one of the best songwriters, I think, in, in our modern era, just the way that she, she has a way with words, let's just put it that way. Uh, she, she called me and says, hey, I'm doing this show, I'm opening up for some buddies at this place near my house called Pisser's Palace. Now Pisser's Palace is in Butte, and I'm not going to show you a picture of the sign, but I'll just let your imagination run wild. Um, again, the name of this place is called Pisser's Palace. So Christy and I go to the show, and we open up for this band who happens to be uh, the main singer and singer-songwriter of the band, happens to be a good friend of Christy's from Austin, and his name is Leo Rondo. And I had never heard of Leo before, but I was in singer-songwriter heaven. I really was watching him play, listening to his songs, looking at the lyrics and being like, whoa, how did you come up with that? Um, I wanna say, I, you know, I'm, Leo is of course his own singer-songwriter, his own voice, his own writing style, but I can't help but compare him to Towns Van Zant because I feel like the way that he approaches the craft of songwriting is, is similar. Uh, in the way that he tells stories, in the way that the stories have interesting twists, and even in the lyrics that he chooses. So rather than me try and uh, do a dissertation on how he writes songs, let's just listen to one of his songs. Uh, this first song we're gonna listen to is called Blackjack Davy Revisited, and I think you'll see what I'm talking about between his voice, 
lyric choice, and just overall songwriting prowess. If you head on a bed of leaves, dry and loose, with no blanket filled with goose, no four walls to call a home, no flickering fire to warm my bones, straight it in for freedom's ride, and to lay at a strange man's side. All right, I hope you enjoy that. That was more of Leo playing solo, which is a treat because you get to hear his guitar playing, which I think is awesome as well. I, I don't want to. I, I want to say that Leo's not necessarily known for his guitar playing, but he's a damn good guitar player. And uh, so that that gives you a little bit of a taste of him solo, right? But I want you to hear him with the band as well because I really think that kind of honky tonk. Uh, country dance hall vibe comes through, especially on this next song entitled When It Was Around. So let's have a listen. Our love sure was something when it was around. Our love sure was something when it was So now that you're hooked on Leo, I want to introduce to you some of his albums. There's four that I know of uh, that I want you to check out, one of which you can only get on his website, and uh, I would encourage you to check that out. Uh, of course, you can find more information on Leo at acousticlife.tv forward slash AT105. You can see all the songs that I'll feature in their entirety, and of course, there are links to purchase his music as well. But just to get on through the albums, we have Down at the End of the Bar, Take It and Break It, Hurt Me For Real, and that's the one that's only available on his website. It's an EP, I believe it's a solo EP, and one that I would recommend you listen to. Uh, very good stuff. And then uh, last, his most recent release, Right On Time, which he actually released a music video for one of the songs off of it. And I wanted to feature just a snippet of it because I think it's a really well done music video, and I really, really like the song. So let's listen to Get On With It. Tells me every night that she talks to them all to confess Yeah, she doesn't know what is best And prays her next move is the one that is blessed Bang my head against that wall so much it's been bruised Trying to solve the mystery, she never gives me any clues to her heart One more parting shot on Leo and just his his um, <laughs> his overall badassness. Um, Leo is uh, he he has this thing with his voice that it's an inflection, and I don't I think it's one of those things that anybody could try to mimic, but they wouldn't nail it like Leo does. I think it's kind of his sonic fingerprint, if you will. One of the things that really uh, I dug about his singing. Uh, so there you have it, Leo Rondo. Make sure to check him out. Again, to learn more about him, go to acousticlife.tv forward slash AT105. You'll see links to his site, links to his merch page, uh, links to purchase his album. And then of course, once you're on his site, make sure to see where he's playing because seeing him live is a treat in and of itself. So if he's playing in a place near you, please check him out. Let him know that uh, you found out about him through Acoustic Tuesday and that, um, well, you're now a new fan of Leo Rondo. All right, we're, we're almost through here, Noah. We're, we just gotta get back to the, uh, the trivia answer here. So just as a quick recap, here was the question that I posed at the beginning of the show. John Prine was born on October 10th, 1946, in what Illinois town? Was it A, Maywood, B, Naperville, C, Peoria, or D, Decatur? <clears throat> if you answered A, Maywood, you are 100% correct. Born and raised in Maywood, Illinois, Prine learned to play the guitar at the age of 14. He attended classes at Chicago's Old Town School of Folk Music. That, that hits me in the heart. Uh, after serving in West Ger Germany with the U.S. Armed Forces, he moved to Chicago in the late 1960s where he worked as a mailman, writing and singing songs as a hobby. Prine was a part of Chicago's folk revival. He was discovered by Chris Christopherson, resulting in the production of Prine's self-titled debut album with Atlantic Records in 1971. 
After receiving critical acclaim, Prine focused on his musical career, recording three more albums for Atlantic. He then signed to Asylum Records, where he recorded an additional three albums. And in 1984, he co-founded Oh Boy Records, an independent record label with which he would release most of his subsequent albums. Widely cited as one of the most influential songwriters of his generation, Prine is known for humorous lyrics about love and life, and current events, as well as serious songs with social commentary or which recollect melancholy tales from his life. Uh, pretty awesome trivia question. Got the Illinois connection. You got John Prine, who I know it says here that he, uh, what did it say? Uh, one of the most influential songwriters of his generation. I would say, I would take the generation out. I would say one of the most influential songwriters, period. Um, Talk about an individual with uh, who has a way with words. Uh, for those of you who may be not familiar with John Prine, I would strongly re recommend checking him out um, if you just want a quick, like, tour de force of some of the most awesome songs ever written. All right, Noah. Well, here we are. We have... Um, huh. I got nothing. <laughs> I, I'm totally stumped. I was going to go the serial, serial route, but we've done that already. Okay, we need like the, the spinning board that we spin. Oh, and, and it picks the it, topic for it, us? Yeah, and it gets three <laughs> words, and that's what you got to use. Well, uh, speaking of wheels, you know, we've spun the Wheel of Fortune. It has landed on the grand prize. We've picked the correct consonant, of which there were four, and loaded our bank account with large sums of money. We then turned to Pat Sajak. We've solved the puzzle, and here we are in the final, um, what do they call that last thing? The challenge. You R S T L N E. You're kind of going. Over. Am I mixing game shows? I think so. Yeah. Okay. I was thinking, are we doing? Are, are we like? Oh, Price is Right has yes. the showcase showdown. Are like, are we with Bob? Are we with uh, Drew? I mean. Sorry, I'll, I'll practice the game show one for you. Okay. For you all, I'm, we need some help, folks. Yeah. <laughs> so if you can please write in the uh, the sign off of Acoustic Tuesday. Yeah. Please, please try and <laughs> help help us help me. Yeah, yeah. Help, uh, help me help you. Uh, oh, all right, let's take a sneak peek and see what's going to happen next week on Acoustic Tuesday. Next week, I have another countdown in the works for you, and I think you're really going to dig this one. We're going to visit a new mule. May, may, I better get my farm outfit on for that. And I'm going to take a crack at talking about some controversial acoustic guitar issues. And that's going to have an interesting twist, one that you're not going to want to miss. Uh, so make sure to check out next week's episode of Acoustic Tuesday. Of course, we thank you for joining us this week on Acoustic Tuesday. And remember, you can catch Acoustic Tuesday every Tuesday on YouTube at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. And that's where all the guitar geeks gather to celebrate their guitar geekiness. And for your Acoustic Tuesday fix in between Tuesdays, please visit AcousticLife.tv, where you can do a deep dive on anything I've ever talked about in any Acoustic Tuesday show. And a quick reminder, we are launching the biggest fundraiser in Guitar Servette's history, so please visit AcousticLife.tv forward slash AT, the number four vets, and uh, participate in that because it's something that if we get this Guitar Geek community to band together, we're going to make an enormous impact and one that will be talked about for years and years and one that will be quite possibly the model for fundraising in this uh, wonderful acoustic guitar community. So thank you so much for watching today. Thank you for, par for participating in the fundraiser and we'll see you next Tuesday on Acoustic Tuesday. Thank you so much and remember, Guitar Geeks Unite. Cheers.